Men are four times more likely to commit suicide, five times more likely after age 65, and 10 times more likely after divorce. They're 24 times more likely to end up in prison, 50% more likely to use illicit drugs, and 75% more likely to become a homicide victim. Throughout the course of this weekend, periodically, just thump your chest like this and say something to yourself. It could be, I'm here, I'm present, I'm awake, I'm aware, I am a man, I'm a good man, I'm a brave man, I'm a loving man, I'm a spiritual man, I am a man that can be counted on, I am a man of my word, I am a man. What does it mean to be a man? What does it mean to be a good man? What does it mean to be a mindful man? Who in your life represents being that man that you can count on? When I was 38 years old, I was lost. And I was getting myself into trouble. And that's when I heard the words, the sacred path, the way of the spiritual warrior. Those words kept resonating. I heard them as though someone were speaking them to me. And I said, what does it mean? And then I heard, bring good men together and bring out the best in them. I transformed my practice to be a practice dedicated and focused on helping men to become better men. So my work with men has been very instrumental in the long run of uh, helping myself to grow into being a more mindful man myself and creating a community of men that are there to really support each other through many uh, developmental periods of their life. A lot of times we as men do not move and grow and change until we get into trouble. But out of trouble can come your gifts. You know, when we take the fall, when we fall, we, ba we basically fall into our wound. And in our wound is, is our genius. That's where our gold is. That's where we learn a lot about ourselves. They say the measure of a man is not so much who he is on the way up, it's who he is on the way down and then on the way back up. The first crisis point in a fellow's life is usually when he's between 15 to 25. That's what I refer to as the identity crisis. It's a time when a young fella is trying to figure out who he is, to individuate from his parents, to cut the tie that has bound him to his parents, and to move on in his life, to discover what his career or his work path is, and also it's a lot about relationships. Another crisis point in a man's life is the midlife crisis. That strikes somewhere between 35 and 45, usually right around 40 years of age. That's what I call the mother of all crises. That's when he's clobbered by a myriad of different kinds of circumstances and issues, situations that are very difficult for him. The third crisis point, the existential crisis, is where a man realizes that he certainly is not as young as he used to be and he starts counting how many years he thinks he has left rather than from birth to his birthday. Uh, I had one man tell me, he said, when I was younger I used to uh, be a pretty good looking guy and women used to give me the eye and he said, now that I'm older women just keep their eye on me. And uh, it, uh, the, it's a time when a fellow is trying to figure out really the meaning of his existence. What has he done with his life? What uh, is his legacy? He asks himself, uh, what have I, have I done? Where am I going? How much time do I have left? The fourth crisis point is the completion crisis. That's where a man is dealing with mortality. It's a time where often there are issues uh, around health. 
he doesn't really at this point even know if he has uh, four or five years left. He's looking backwards and he's asking himself, what have I done with my life? What uh, have I left for others? It's a time when a man asks himself uh, if he's been an older or if he's been an elder. An elder is a man who uh, feels like he has given something that has been helpful to younger fellows. An older uh, man often looks back and thinks that maybe he squandered years and uh, wishes that he could get some of those years back so that he could do them over again. The condition that is central to the enduring trauma that many men suffer is what I, I refer to as the father gap. It's essentially when a father is heavy-handed and goes over the top and crushes a boy's spirit, or worse, when a father is missing in action and goes out of a boy's life. You know, men have sat throughout history together around a fire. They've sat in caves to explore what it means to be a man. In yonder years, in other times, we had rites of passage where young fellas that were around 12 or 13, many of you are that age in this room were taken away from the village by the men across the river, away from their mothers, and were put into an encampment across the river where for several days, if not several weeks, you were put through tests. Rites of passage on a journey to mindful manhood, on the hero's journey to discovering what it means to be a man. NBA, yes sir. Yes sir. Remember what you wrote on that card that it was going to take you to get to the NBA. Reapply it here. It's going to take some of the same things. Stay focused. Three, two, one. Let's get it. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. First step on this, uh, this hill, I said, what are women at? <laughs> you know, and, uh, back in my town, there was a lot of racism, you know. And when I came here, it didn't matter, you know. It doesn't matter if you're black, white, yellow, orange, or red. You yeah, guys made me realize that. You know, but what I'm trying to say is thank you for making me realize that this is not about the color of your skin. So thank you for not judging me for my cover. Y'all really taught me a lot this, uh, this last couple days, man. <laughs> you told me that uh, you're never too young to become a leader. Oh. See? Oh. All my life I've been uh, I've been looking up, even at people that are shorter than me. Too early, probably like 13, 14. 
And these little dudes right here, Liam, these two, and they showed me what real joy is, man. We was out there. I was tired from the sweat lounge. Oh, Jesse too. We was out there putting in work though on the court though. Man, it's just, it's great. Like, this is something that I know people around our community need. And what I want to tell y'all is, be the change that you want to see in the world. You feel me? Hey, you hear me? You go back to your community and you spread love and you show that just because they're judging you for your color, you're not gonna judge them for judging you. You're gonna give them compassion that you want them to give you, right? It's a lot of pressure and it has nothing to do with color. I'm not looking for excuse. But it's a lot of pressures just being a man in this world, period. When you walk through there blindfolded, and that, that blindfold just took off your eyes, it's real symbolic when this man tells you, welcome home. Because this truly indeed, up here on this mountain, is my home. I'm not judged for anything up here. Nothing. Nothing. The stigmas that they that they put upon us down that hill, I don't have to think about that for the next four, three, four days. Up. If that is not a relief up. for any man standing up here, if that is not a relief for you, then you have no business climbing up this hill. Because it's real right here. I've been shot before. I lost a lung. And this, this trip showed me that anything is possible as long as you believe that you can do whatever you put your mind to. I went into that sweat lodge scared as I don't know what. You know, for one lung, scared. Like, am I going to be able to breathe? But uh, I got in there and I was singing songs that I didn't even know. <laughs>Self-discipline is also self-control. Positive intentionality is the second one. The ability to control your mind so that your thoughts are positive, so that negative thoughts don't ride roughshod over your mind and control you in a negative way. The third is valor. Valor is like courage with a little different spin on it. And that is that when one is valiant, what he does is he exercises his courage for a cause. Sometimes even putting his life on the line to do something that makes a real difference in the world. Honor. Honor. What does it mean to be an honorable man? And then the fifth is compassion. These are heartfelt men, men who open their hearts, have empathy and compassion, who know how to love, who don't see being a loving man as being a weak person, but understand that their hearts are a central part of their very being. And bringing their hearts and their heads together is essentially the opera operational definition of being a mindful man. And then the sixth challenge is finding joy in your life. Joy is a little different than happiness because happiness is external to us. It's fleeting. There are things that come and go. There are things that make us happy and there are things that make us unhappy. But actually, joy is something that's inside of us. It's internal. We can even feel our joy when we're not happy about something. My name is Steven. What this represents for me is going for it. I'm going to feel the fear and do it anyway. I'm going to relax as best I can and I'm going to enjoy it. All right. Climbing.
much but other than I didn't get to the top. Either two things can be happening. Either you're a perfectionist, you don't like to make mistakes, or you're really afraid that you might fall and hurt yourself. Which one is it? Of the two, it's more the perfectionist. Right, right it is, right. Yeah. Afraid to fail. Alright, don't be afraid to fail. What's wrong with failing? What are you taking off? Failing is a lesson. Right. It's okay to fail. Right. Give yourself permission. Okay. Let's do it. Come on, it's okay to fail. Yeah! It's okay. Yeah, 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 it's okay. Be aware that you're standing strong. Be aware that you have power. Be aware how strong you are. Be aware of that. Be aware of that. Take a deep breath. Now you are aware. Now you are aware of something greater than fear. Ready for a countdown? Yes. Countdown. Five, Five four, three, two, one. Nice job, nice, nice job. Nice concentration, man. <laughs> that was inspiring. Right coaching helped a lot. Yeah, he was great. I know. He was fantastic. I know. <laughs> Thank you for being a demonstration. What it's like to be aware. That was huge for everybody to see. Yeah. That was a good job. Thank you. Good job. Thank, Thank you. you. Stable. Look Thank at you. Dude, you man. did it. Yeah, yeah. good job. Yeah. Thank you. Good job, too. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Good job. Thanks, Thanks buddy. Oh, that one. Thanks for the This. This is what it's all about. You know, it's like rites of passage for young people, rites of passage for old guys, you know? I'm the oldest guy here today, and yet I feel like one of the kids. <laughs> 